1007. Caller 10 or 800-348-1007. Alan Cox. A drummer. Not even a real musician. He just makes a noise. If he played the violin or the piano, anything that made sense, but the drums. 100.7 WMMS. Do you know Whiskey Myers, Mary? No. Hmm, Whiskey Myers. Do you? No. I mean, I, I like the, they look like they'd be pretty good. I know Myers Rum. They opened for the Stones in Chicago a few years ago. They got handpicked by a Jagger and company. And they've had some, uh, I guess they kind of blew up because they got some songs on that show Yellowstone. I never watched that. I keep trying to watch it. It's like a, it's like um, like Sons of Anarchy, but on a ranch. Yeah, it's Kevin Costner, yeah. and yeah, just a crazy popular show. But I can't. Maybe I got to dig into it more. I don't know. I couldn't get into it, and it's exactly the kind of show I feel like I should like. But my roommate and I over the weekend were talking about Sons of Anarchy. She had never watched it, and I was I was explaining. I was like, "Are you ever going to watch it?" She's like, "No." So I was telling her some of like the major deaths that happened. She's like, "Dude, this is brutal." I'm like, "Oh yeah, it was a." Insane show. Yeah. Tara got a fork in the head, right? Uh, was it a fork? I thought so. Her mom, uh, Jax's mom killed her. Yeah. I thought she I got, like a, I I thought she got like a yeah, there's a fork in the head or something. This is Whiskey Myers. I get to it. Bottles flowing. And as you take my hand, this sounds like something I would like. All right, well, there you go. Some of that. I'll have tickets for you for them all week. Hey, Tish. Hi. Hi. How are we doing today? So far, so good. Good. Hey, I'm backtracking. You guys are talking about marathons. Um, I've run the Columbus Half Marathon a few times. I highly recommend if you're going to be oh, your first Oh, good marathon, for you. Woo-hoo! Um... <laughs> I highly recommend um, the Columbus one because, number one, it's mostly flat. Mm -hmm. Um, Number two, there's a lot of entertainment along the way. They have DJs. They have bands set up. I mean, it just it keeps you occupied while you're running. And there's even a guy set up who you can bong a beer with. Yeah, but don't, doesn't that kind of – I would think that you'd want to maintain some focus. I know everybody's kind of got oh, no, a different I, thing. I've never done it. I've never bonged a beer with that guy. Um, the entertainment, they're rooting you on. They're cheering you on. Um, it's good. I mean, I – yeah, I highly recommend it. Yeah, Columbus some – I, I understand that some people really benefit from the people on the sidelines going, you can do it. But all yeah. I think is, shut up. You're not running. You're standing there. What are right. you doing? Get out of my face. That would I, not I – uh, I know I'm I a different that. breed of cat, but, I mean, that would not uh, – I don't, I don't need looky-loos uh, egging me on. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right. Are, are you – but you're a marathoner, well, Tish, or this is just something you've heard used of? Used to be. Used to be. Used to be. I ran the Columbus Half Marathon probably four times, and then the Santa Hustle – in Sandusky, I did that one. Oh. Now, what stopped you from yeah. doing that? You just lost interest or what? I got hurt, and um, I gained 70 pounds as of 10 years ago, and I've lost 50 of them. Wow, congrats. <laughs> but, thank you, you. But no, seriously, I got hurt, and I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not going to exercise. I'm not going to watch what I eat, and that was really dumb. You got hurt running? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Wow. All yeah. right. Well, listen, yeah. you've had, right. um, if you'll if you'll pardon the pun, you've had quite a journey, Tish. Thank you. Yeah. I uh, appreciate that. All right. Congrats. Uh, you, guys, you guys have a great day. Thanks. Oh, we will. Thank you. Alan, my dad was a dedicated runner who started in his 50s. He ran every day between 8 and 20 miles. He was in numerous marathons and triathlons through his late 70s. See, it's never too late, Mary. I never said that it was. Ne- I'm proud of your dad, and he deserves his <laughs> Never too his late, right? And that's great for him. I, I just truly, in my heart, don't believe that running can ever be something that I would enjoy like right. that. Right. I've tried, man. I have tried.
What about a treadmill? I don't even like those. Yeah. My thought is treadmills, like, I'd rather do this outside. I'd rather be in looking at things than running in place. We used to have a treadmill. Now we have a Peloton. But we used to have a treadmill, and I was like, you know, this is good for, like, in the wintertime or whatever. Some people run all year long, though. But um, Running on a treadmill is easier. It is easier, yeah, because it's you all it's slower. it's even yeah. ground. But you know, I, I feel like the uh, you know uneven ground kind of keeps you. I was gonna say on your toes, but sore, I mean, sore. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah, well, everybody's got uh, their own thing. Listen, I just started my little workouts again. Okay, so maybe we'll be running by next year. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But I highly, highly, highly doubt it. Stephen Canton says he binge watched Yellowstone last year and doesn't regret it. Awesome show. Yeah, that's the thing is everybody's like, I mean, I think it's it's dad TV, but I mean, um, everybody seems to like it. Maybe it's just something you got to dig into. It's like my, my my son and I were talking, Community is his favorite sitcom of all time, and we were oh, talking about Community. Me, me and him. And I'm like, it. so I started it. We, we got back from the Brit Floyd show last night. We got some food and basically got back a little bit after midnight. And so we're sitting there eating, and I fire up community. And I'm like, this is a show I feel like I should really like. It's just not clicking with me. And That's I hate- how I felt about uh, the, the old man show that you guys like. Curb your enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I hate leaving a show that I should like on the roadside. You know? And some shows, they kind of have to find their footing. Like Parks and Rec, the first couple seasons of that well, that's show. That's kind of how was community really. is. Cause the, well, that's the, what he said. He goes, the yeah. first season, towards the end, they start figuring out, okay, this is, you know, we're going to be a little different. We're going to be a little weirder. And then season two and three are just great. And then four is a little, because they fired Dan Harmon. And yeah. we're back for season five and six. I love that show. I can watch it again and again and again. And I do. Yeah. You know what other show I felt like that about? was Letter Kenny. When I watched like probably four or five episodes and I'm like, I hate this. And by all means, I should love this show. We it's just I felt like it was so overwritten. It's so overwritten. We kind of like, bailed from even... Letter Kenny by like season three because I'm like, it's funny. It but is. it's so overwritten. The lines are funny, but they can't come every five seconds. Right. Like, there's no timing at all. And, like, nobody talks like this, (laughs) you know. But, no, it is. It's one of those shows. Like, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. You know, I like all the 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 Tina Fey, Robert Carlock stuff because I love 30 Rock. I like Girls 5 Eva. Kimmy Schmidt, I could not get into it. Could not get into it. I love Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. It's a, again, it's one of those shows where if people say they like it, I'm like, I get it. it. It's It seems subjectively funny, but I'm like, it's just, I it just doesn't click with me. In the, I don't know. When Brian and I started dating in 2020, we were looking for a show to watch, and we tried Letter Kenny. And after like the first two episodes, he was like, "What do you think?" I was like, "I, th- I, I really think I hate this." I was like, "But I can't. <laughs> I feel like I need to watch more because the jokes are good, you know." And then we landed on what we do in the shadows, which is just unparalleled. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Letter Kenny to me felt like Canadian, always sunny. And I was like, but overwritten? I, I don't know. New York City. I got money here. This is your last chance to win today, and then we'll start it up all over again tomorrow morning. Uh, Friday, though, afternoon on this show is going to be the last keyword for a while. So take advantage of these throughout this week before we go into the holiday weekend. It's $1,000 right now from the Buzzard Bookie. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Grand. That's grand. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Uh, speaking of Peacock, they have a Yankees documentary that dropped. Have you seen the... the I've seen the preview for yeah, it. Bronx yeah, Bronx Zoo 90. Yeah. yeah. That looks really good. Crime Chaps and Baseball is what it's called. Uh, I was reading today is International Streaming Day. I don't know what the Uh hell that means. That's every day. (laughs) Every day is International Streaming Day. Well, somebody put a thing out. They were like, um, hey, for people who I'm one of those people that um, subscribes to every frigging service because if there's something on, I want to watch it. But it is ridiculous. 
And these things are all getting bundled. And um, there was an audio quiz. If you could determine the sound, uh, the boot up sounds of the streamers. Oh, let's do it. Now, the first, well, okay, hold on. Um, oop, hold on, sorry. I got I get this ready here. Oh. Netflix. Netflix. Right, that's an easy yeah. one, yeah. right? Yeah. Everyone knows that. That's Hulu? No, I think. Oh, that is Hulu. Good mm-hmm. job. I don't think I watch anything on Hulu. Max? No. Daddy. It's Amazon Prime. Oh, I, I never that. watch yeah, Amazon. Yeah, again, it, it it depends. Some people don't barely watch any of them. Which one is that? Paramount. Nope. No, that is Max. Nope. Nope. Peacock? Disney Plus. Disney Plus, yeah. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> I got that's the first Well, out of the blue, it's hard to okay. tell. That's Max? That is Max. Okay. Yes, yeah. that's HBO Max. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's that's Peacock. Nope. No? Apple. Nope. Paramount? Paramount Plus. Okay. okay. Yep. What's the Peacock? Uh... Okay, now that's Peacock. It's got a flutter on it. <laughs> that's yeah, Peacock. It, it had to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Tubi? I don't know. No, that one's Apple TV. Apple TV. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I forget exists. Now I wouldn't that's YouTube TV. I would not uh, know yeah. that one. I think I had YouTube TV for a hot minute. When no. it was like thirty dollars, it was great. But now it's like 90. 70, 70 bucks. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I, National Streaming Day, whatever. Okay. Well, uh, well we did it. Apple got TV. Them, them wrong. Apple. I, I can't. I'm actually glad I got a lot of them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it took this long for somebody to to wade into this. But Apple TV wants to pay actors now based on how many people watch their movies. I... So the streamers now, because it's so fractured and Netflix isn't the only game in town, they're all trying to find now these creative ways of paying the creators less, mm-hmm. compensating talent in different ways. So Apple is the it's first making one. making it all YouTube. What's that? It's basically just making it YouTube. Right? Yeah. Based on hours watched. Yeah, Apple comes out of the gate and goes, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna rework our uh, compensation packages based on how many people are watching your movies." Which you can understand from their perspective. You know, you look at Netflix that spends a hundred million dollars on these movies that they're just sure everyone's gonna watch, and they all stink. The Gray Man and Red Notice and all you know these like nine figure movies. Well, I think like Madam Web is the number one show on or movie on Netflix right now, because people will go, "Well, was it really that bad? I gotta see." And even if they watch twenty minutes of it, that's twenty minutes they spent on Netflix, and they go back to whatever they watch most of the time. Yeah, yeah. So Apple has been talking to like agents and talent agencies and things like that, and saying that the new model is going to be based on a points system. So, like, the number of people who signed up for you Apple didn't TV. You get your and... gold star this week. <laughs> yeah. But still, like, I, I can't believe it took one of these streamers that long to do that. Because it's a brave new world, boy. If you're an actor or you're a creator of any kind or a producer or whatever, it's like you're at the whim. It's not just TikTok and, you know, you're at the whims, man, of what these companies are doing and what they want to do and you know, those those pay or play deals, those are long gone. Ain't nobody getting holding deals anymore or anything like that. I did my first self tape audition over the weekend. Mm-hmm. And um Oh good for you. Thank you very much. Um it was for a category of film that was described as ultra low budget. <laughs> And I was like, that's That's how they're telling telling you that they can't pay you. Well, I was like, what is that? Like like $1,000? What is ultra low budget? It's like 400 grand still, which I know is, I feel like is so much money. Well, it's through a studio? Just to make a movie. Yeah, it's like a legitimate 
gig. Yeah, to, it's like SAG. It's, to them, that's low budge. But, but I mean, if it was that's somebody, what you know, blew my mind. Yeah. Is that I think of all these things that are on these streamers. And I'm like, this couldn't have cost that much money to make. And then this this particular one is considered ultra low budget. And I'm like, like Baby Reindeer. I'm like, there's no how much? How did that that one cost more than four hundred thousand dollars to make? Like, I don't know, man. It's just crazy. I don't know. I like that that lady. Did anybody watch the Baby Reindeer watched, lady with Piers Morgan? I watched the entire thing. Yeah. And then I watched a, a body a language expert break it down. Very interested. You in didn't that. even need a body no, language expert. It was very clear yeah. this woman is uh, got mental problems mm-hmm. and is lying. Because uh, this other guy has come forward and been like, this same woman stalked me. This guy who is in British Parliament. He's like, she sent me 300 emails in eight months and said, like, she knew where my house was and she was going to attack his family. So, yes, this woman is bonkers. But if you watched the... Piers Morgan interview, you know, as impartial as Piers Morgan can be, I guess he was trying to be, Fiona Harvey is the woman, and she wanted to remain anonymous, and that Richard Gadd, for people who have watched Baby Reindeer. Are you playing music? Yeah. Oh, okay. I couldn't tell if that was coming from the studio around me or if that was you. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. I just want to make sure that, I just want to make sure, that's all. I mean, now I'm not. Don't do that. (laughs) Don't do that to me. I, turn, I don't know what you're talking. I turn it off, I'm Mary. Too tired for that. Are you okay? I turn I'm it off. Good. This Fiona Harvey woman sat down with Piers Morgan because, of course, she's going to sue Netflix and she's going to sue the guy and she's going to sue everybody. But it didn't take long at all. It's not like Piers Morgan had to do some deep dive into her life. He's like, well, the police have records of you sending this guy 20,000 emails. And he's like, you know that the texts could be. Uh, you know, determined from your phone. They would, they could trace the IP back to your computer. She's like, oh, yes, oh, of course. Of, yes, yes. You know, all this stuff. But it was very, very uncomfortable Didn't to watch this Didn't she keep being woman. like my lawyer boyfriend? and mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah. All it's my, all this stuff. I'm a paralegal, but I didn't, I went to two law classes or something. I don't know. Well, and every person who has had any um, interaction with this woman, either professionally or otherwise, they all have the same story which is this woman's crazy, and she's a stalker. And why is the the baby reindeer guy is not lying? Like, he didn't create this out of whole cloth, you know? And then she came forward, I guess, in a misguided attempt to defend her name or her honor or whatever. But all of these people have records. They have emails that she sent them, you know? And uh, this uh, guy in British Parliament is like, yeah, here's an email she sent me. I know where you live, and, you know... Blah, blah, blah. I've got to take a break. Guardians baseball, not far off. 6-10. We're going to get you to first pitch. Uh, It's the first of three. The Mets are in town. Francisco Lindor probably set to get a nice ovation from Guardians fans. And uh, we'll take a break here. 35192. And text me for anything, and we'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. And now, a buzzard bookie safe bet. If you got to be in court, always check behind the toilets for bribe money that hasn't been collected yet. And always be listening for those keywords to win $1,000. Up to nine chances to play every weekday at 30 past the hour. Take the action from the buzzard bookie on 100.7 WMMS. Brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Here's my 